Welcome back to BBN tonight. The cats are undefeated, which means uh, no one is allowed mm. to change their routine, right? No, no. Do not mess up the mojo. For <laughs> us, that means it's time for our regular Monday evening chat with the voice of the Wildcats, Tom Leach, joining us now. Tom, we've all heard this a hundred times, but it never gets old. <laughs> Kentucky is 6-0 for the first time since 1950. Just the second time in program history. Has that sunk in for you? And what did you see out of the cats on Saturday night? Yeah, it's exciting to um, have them on a run like this. Um, you know, four years ago or three years ago, they got to 5-0 and, and, and lost an OT down at A&M. So they nearly uh, did this then. Um, and I think having uh, some of the guys still on the team from that season, even if they weren't playing a lot, they, they know what all of that felt like and uh, they know how maybe to, to better manage the distractions and everything that goes along with playing a, a game of this magnitude on Saturday. Uh, on the road this time rather than Georgia playing here in 2018. And as far as, you know, on the field, um, I think defensively it started with the South Carolina game. I remember the next week uh, leading into the Florida game, I was interviewing Coach Stoops for the pregame show and asked him about his defense. And he said that was one of the best defensive performances in a long time here. And he wanted to go even further. And then he kind of caught himself. He didn't want to uh, you know, put any bulletin board material or anything out there. So he just stopped there. But he's been really pleased, I think, with how they're playing defensively, um, how uh, well they're playing with and for each other. And now the offense had its breakout game against LSU. It was a little concerning going into the game that the Cats would be without Josh Ali, but clearly Liam Cohen made it work. He got the running backs more involved, threw a couple of passes their way. Uh, Coach Stoops talked today and said it's doubtful that Ali will be back for Saturday and the team will continue to get the running backs more involved in the pass game. Uh, Tom, nice, easy, quick fix. I, it, I don't know if anything's easy against Georgia, uh, <laughs> but um, I think the – Tight ends can be an even bigger part of this. Uh, they, uh, Isaiah Cummings should have had a catch on that first drive. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's a guy that I think is going to have a, a big game at some point. Saturday would be a good time for it. But uh, I think he's a guy that uh, they have a lot of confidence in and they can they see you know, big things for him. So uh, he's a guy maybe that uh, could uh, find, you know, a lot of it's obviously dictated by, you know, uh, what uh, the defense gives you. Uh, but Isaiah Epps is playing better. Mm -hmm. Would love to see one of the young receivers, uh, you know, step up and seize the moment. But, uh, you know, that hasn't happened yet. Uh, hopefully it will. And uh, Juton McClain uh, is a guy I think they, they uh, think catches the ball very well. He got a touchdown catch, so maybe mm -hmm. he builds on that. Another way UK made up for the loss of Ali was getting the tight ends more involved in the passing game, which leads us to this. Isaiah Cummings, as you mentioned, robbed of a catch on the goal line. Ref said he didn't have possession. Here's what Liam Cohen said about that call after the game. Great explanation. Um, you know, it looked like a bang, bang play where I thought he had possession. Um, Isaiah really ran a good route, was physical and um, I was hoping to get him in the zone there. That was the first score uh, on the slant route that they end up calling as a no target and a no completion. Tom, obviously in the end it didn't matter. It was a route either way, but come on, what are they thinking? <laughs> well, it could have been targeting, could have not. He maybe got into the zone, maybe didn't. But the one thing I am absolutely sure about is that he caught the ball. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, even Coach Stoops said he's sending yep. it into the SEC. He'll find out, Good. but he hasn't yet. All right, we can't get through this without talking about another stellar defensive performance, starting with DeAndre Square's strip sack in the first quarter. Tom, that really set the tone for the rest of the game. Yeah, that's uh, what they want to do more of is create some uh, turnovers to give the offense a short field. That's the kind of play that it's going to take, I think, to, to win a game against Georgia there. They are so good defensively. Number one in the nation in total defense, number one in passing defense, number four against the run, number one in scoring defense. Mm -hmm. You're not going to have multiple 75, 80 yard drives against a team like that. So you need uh, a short field or two or a big mm -hmm. play in special teams. And uh, hopefully they can uh, find a way to do that and uh, keep, you know, Kentucky, I think, is a team that, that plays in such a way that it hangs around in games, uh, no matter you know who, how good the opponent is. Uh, more often than not, they, they hang around, and I think that's what you hope to do in a situation like that where you're playing the number one team at their place. Hang around, get to that fourth quarter, 
uh, be tied, be within a, a score, and <laughs> take your shot, make a you know make a play in the fourth quarter to get that upset. As you were just saying, next up, the number one team in America, the Georgia Bulldogs. College game day is coming. SEC Nation is coming. People have said the moment was just too big for Kentucky back in 2018, but this is also a different Georgia team. Tom, what do you think this time around? Well, I think Kentucky, having been in that situation before, having, as I said earlier, some players that even if they weren't playing, they were there in the preparation and on the sidelines. I think that has to help. I think you know, Kentucky is is growing this program in an amazing way under Mark Stoops. And so they're they're finding their way into these kinds of games. So uh, you get that experience once and you benefit from it the next time. And so I get the sense that, you know, these guys uh, are very level headed, that uh, they are uh, maybe a little better prepared uh, for this stage, this time. And, uh, you know, as coach Stoops always uses that phrase, don't flinch. I don't think they'll flinch. They may not win, but uh, I don't think they'll uh, they'll flinch down in between the hedges. Uh, Tom, we can't let you go without uh, getting your thoughts on Pro Day. First chance we really gotten to see the new basketball players live and in action. What would you think? You know, I uh, didn't get to see a lot of it because I was working uh, Keeneland, but uh, I've, I've taped it, actually. I'm going to go back and watch. But I, I know I saw a little bit towards the end. And, you know, I think with – with Cal, he's got so many different ways he can go. It's a great problem to have when you've got so many talented players and he's not, as he said, he's not going to play, you know, 12. He's not going to be a platoon or anything. Mm, yeah. So it's going to be a tremendous competition for minutes. And for him, uh, he's got to sort out how do you best deploy the chess pieces that you have. And that's going to be real interesting uh, to see how that works out and how much it changes over the course of the season. But uh, I thought really some of the things he said – uh, I thought were particularly interesting as far as Kellen Grady uh, adapting to this level, things like that. Uh, I got, uh, I think, uh, a, a lot out of uh, some of the things that he said and got some insight into uh, what he's thinking right now. Awesome, Tom. Thanks so much for joining us. Enjoy it, guys. All right, stay right there. You're watching BBN Tonight.